this is for those of you that have huge hearts. Um, one of my biggest mistakes is giving too much. And the truth is like, you can give your way into poverty. You can help others so much that your cup will be empty. And, and kudos to Matt. Uh, when I flew back to Atlanta with Xander, as soon as I came in, it was like 1130 and Matt and his wife was at the bar. And one of the things she was saying was like, listen, you can keep pouring into other people, but then not have anything left for yourself. You have to guard yourself and protect yourself. So for those of you with big hearts and you can give and that can be another version of spending. So you may not spend it on Louis bags or Gucci bags or diamonds, but you can give away so much that it ends up hurting your net worth. So for my givers, I need you to know this. You have to set a percentage of what you will give and stop there. If you have an exceptionally big heart, please put the percentage in chat that you're going to give away per year to help others and don't exceed that. Because some of us may be savers and be very thrifty in, in certain areas, but we can overgive helping others. And then there's no different than giving all our money away to a company. So please be mindful of that. You know, I love Elon, but the, Elon's turning to the crypto killer. Um, so I saw this tweet and I thought it was pretty interesting. And it said, Bitcoiners are going to slap themselves next quarter when they find out Tesla's dumping all of their Bitcoin holdings. And Tesla said, indeed, listen, I love Elon. I don't know how he's able to get away with some of the things that, well, cryptocurrencies are not regulated in the same way that securities are. So that's part of the reason why. Um, I told the stock club members earlier before we got on, he's in a very interesting situation with China, where China is now trying to control him and Tesla. And he began dumping an asset that he was using to hedge to then get into another asset where he doesn't have much control. We've seen this with Jack Ma. And China is a very dictatorial regime, as is the United States, but they are a little bit tougher than we are. So part of the reason why he is starting to dump Bitcoin is because some of the issues that he is facing in China and the sales of the cars, because he already promised that Tesla was going to have a significant impact. And, he, and now he's starting to realize that may not have been the best move there. Michael Burry of The Big Short, a book that I mentioned earlier, um, has 800,000 Tesla put options in the first quarter worth 534 million. For those of you who do not know, Michael Burry is the person that called the housing crash and bet it heavily on it. Homework for tonight. I need you to go look and see when he began placing these shorts on Tesla and then correlate that on a chart to see what price he got in. If you do that, you can start to reverse engineer and see based off a of percentage basis when he is looking to get into his position. A key lesson for everyone here, you have to listen to the contrarian opinions of the greats. So whenever this happens, people are going to be like, no, Tesla's going to go up. I'm not saying Tesla's not going to go back up. But remember a few months ago, I told you they were going to start to hit some issues once they hit those highs. And then if Kathy gets attacked, which she has, and then all the funds begin to dwindle down her fund and squeeze her, the assets in her holdings are going to take a hit as well. And that's what we're starting to see here. And Michael Burry is taking uh, advantage of that as well. A lot of you have been asking us, what's up with tech? Nothing. Nothing's up with tech. You're just not going to get an easy 80% or 200% this year. We're going to be back to the normal 12 to 18% maybe 23% in a great company, write this down. Focus on companies with the lowest, lowest drawdown. Focus on companies with the lowest drawdown. Mike Novogratz came on here a few weeks ago and told us that minimization of risk is everything. And I know it's much more fun to get 110% gain than focus on a company that's only going to draw down 8% for the year. But you have to look at it. Defense wins championships, especially when it comes to investing uh, and this week my, my guy pete had asked me he's like hey are you a believer in crypto my stance is still the same i want to be on the record i still hate it but i still am invested in it the only uh, crypto holding i am in right now is in bitcoin and i've had that position for a few years kayla came on here and told you guys about cardano cardano hit an all-time high and while other cryptos were getting torn apart uh, cardano was doing incredibly well so please be mindful of that now write this down there is a cycle that you'll see. So when negativity is spread, it's often to free up shares of the asset. So if I come to you and say, hey, man, don't, don't invest in Wingstop or McDonald's because I don't know, you know, people don't, 
people are, lend, are lending towards or leading towards eating healthy, don't invest in it. You will see the same thing in, in crypto real estate investing. And people are often doing that. And when there's a concerted effort all at one time, when everyone is blasting one asset, it's usually because other companies or institutions are trying to get the assets for themselves. This is like investment version of dry snitching. Like they want to keep you away from certain things to then take advantage of it. And then watch how in two or three months, these assets will go back up the same ones in which people are telling you not to invest in. So be mindful. 23. In 2023, investing is going to be a little bit more difficult if interest rates go up. And here's a cycle that for those of us that are veteran investors, we're going to see again. Banks are now going to extend loans to customers with no credit. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. They're going to chop up these assets and put them in tranches again and sell them off to Wall Street. And when everything falls apart, guess who they're going to blame? The people who were underbanked and had no credit. And they're going to blame them for the crash while profiting on the upside of giving the loans and shorting the downside and being the ones who tell the government what to do to get out of the bailout. I'm, I've been told that 2027 is when we're going to have our next big crash. 2023 is going to be a smaller crash. And uh, I said squares the new JP Morgan. JP Morgan is behind this trend or leading this trend. But there's 53 million people who do not have a credit score or they are underbanked. They are looking at that as a huge market. But I want you to see the game inside of the game and understand what's going to happen. JP Morgan is leading the charge. I want you to go look at the next three or four big banks that are going to be involved in this. So when we have a crash in 2027, you may be able to pick up those assets for cheap. Now, when 19 Keys is on, we talked about HoloLens and everything they have. In the beginning, I showed you Microsoft Mesh. This really caught me by surprise. Microsoft has created the first digital DNA hard drive. Let me say it again. They have created the first digital DNA hard drive. We are getting into some fantasy land, scary-ish. Um, and they're going to use it to store and retrieve data. So it stores information in synthetic DNA molecules that are created in the laboratory. So if they have Azure, which is cloud-based competitor to AWS, and then they start to store all the DNA, put in chat, if they can sequence the DNA to understand what can happen, what industries could they be involved in? We're getting involved into scary territory, but I think Microsoft's plan, and I've been telling you guys for two years, Microsoft is gonna be able to get into healthcare. If Microsoft can crack the code for cancer and genetic sequencing, because a lot of the genome companies don't have any profit and the revenue is not as strong as it should, this could be their move into the next 10, 15 years, which gives them uh, a lot more livelihood in life. It's key lesson. The companies with the most capital and best technological advantage will control the future. So I like NEO, right? NEO is solid. Not the best company, but they don't have an advantage over Tesla. There are some tech companies that I like. They don't have more capital than Microsoft and Apple. This will be the next frontier. Healthcare is one of the most important spaces, and you're going to see them make an aggressive push into there over the next few years. My graduates from my school being Forbes. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>